It's the early 90s, the era of Clinton, the Cowboys, How about them Cowboys? Yeah! and Ace of Base. And they're not the only ones with a new life. Former small town Texas girl Vicki Lynn Hogan is now Anna Nicole Smith. She's gone from poverty to playmate, is the face of guest jeans. She's married a billionaire, 60 years her senior. And now at 27, she's about to break into Hollywood. She was in the Hudsucker Proxy. That's a Coen Brothers movie with Paul Newman. She didn't play Lady Macbeth, but Hudsucker Proxy's a pretty good little movie. Wow. Next, a small role in the screwball comedy Naked Gun 33 and a Third, alongside Leslie Nielsen. Cigarette? Yes, I know. She used to write in a diary. Tell me about her entry in this diary. She writes, August 2nd, my experience with Naked Gun. Met the cast today, they were great, so maybe this won't be so scary. Wish me luck. She was living the dream. And while some see her as a movie star, plenty of others see Anna Nicole as a punchline. She is a sex machine. Probably a habit she picked up married to that 90-year-old billionaire. One that one people would understand. Forget about the damn age. He saved my life, and I saved his life. He took me out of a terrible place, and he cares for me and my son. Did she genuinely love him? That was no act. And I don't know if it was the kind of physical type of thing, but it was what he did for her and what he did for Daniel. He knew me when I was nobody, and that's what people don't understand. And I don't want to be called a gold digger because I'm not. I'm not a gold digger. I could have married him a week after we met. I didn't. I went out and I made something of myself. And while Anna Nicole was making that name for herself, her wealthy husband was showering her with gifts, spending, by some estimates, nearly $12 million to keep her happy. But the lavish life comes to an abrupt end when, after just 14 months of marriage, the 89-year-old oil magnate meets his maker. And in an even bigger shock to Anna Nicole, there's no mention of her in his will. He just always promised me once we're married, you know. Half of everything is mine. That was his promise to me. If that's true, her husband never put it in writing. A big problem for Anna Nicole, since the sole heir to Marshall's estate, his 61-year-old son Pierce is not in a generous mood. He cuts Anna off and even fights her on his father's final resting place. I, I have nothing to say. Thank you very much. They got to stage consecutive funerals. The image that many people will have of the funeral of J. Howard Marshall II is Anna Nicole Smith wearing the wedding dress that she'd worn when the two of them were married. After the dueling funerals, the legal bickering is on, with Anna suing for half her late husband's money and her stepson suing her right back. Pierce Marshall's lawyer, Rusty Hardin, in 2001. There was never any evidence of any corroboration from any source that J. Howard Marshall ever intended to leave her half of anything. And Hardin today. He was going to give her all this money and things during his lifetime that would be sufficient to support her the rest of her life. And most of us can get along on $12 million. He says Marshall's son was only following his dad's wishes. You were under the impression. Which were clearly spelled out in his will. I used to say that one reason I could understand Anna was that she was a glutton. She wanted all of everything. Yet after her husband's death, everything is gone, in Anna's bank account anyway. She files for bankruptcy in California, insisting she's owed money from her late husband's estate. And in a bombshell ruling, the court agrees, awarding Anna Nicole, get this, nearly half a billion dollars. But she still has her stepson Pierce and that lawsuit in Texas to deal with. The trial stretches to nearly six months and becomes red meat for the media. Our top story tonight, Anna Nicole Smith. You graduated from which? Mitchell. Yeah, I'm a dropout, Rusty. No one's talking about you, I'm not a bookworm. I'm not a smart person. Listen, but I know that he, Marshall, my husband was choking to death. You're just up there making stuff up as you go along. I am not making anything up, Rusty. Hardin presses Anna Nicole on what he calls her unusual efforts to ingratiate herself into Marshall's will. Sometimes, ma'am, isn't it true when you were doing these tapes, you would take off your top while you sat there next for him and got him to say these things, wouldn't you? Oh, Mr. Hart. Is that true or pervert. untrue? If somebody was to, pardon that me? That is not true. And pardon I think me? You're sick. Hardin recalls one light moment while questioning Anna Nicole's exorbitant spending habits. Ms. Marshall, 
how do you spend $100,000 a week? And she looks at me like I'm from Mars and says, You gotta buy gowns, you gotta buy shoes, you gotta uh, pay hair and makeup. I mean, it's very expensive to be me. I mean, it's terrible. <laughs> that was my favorite line. That was something we could agree on. And then that famous exchange from her six days of sparring with Hardin on the stand. Ms. Marshall, have you been taking new acting lessons? <laughs> Screw you, Rusty. You know, 10 years later, I'd be on a Southwest Airlines plane putting a bag up, and some little blue-haired lady in the back would yell, Screw you, Rusty! So I, it never did offend me. In the end, the jury doesn't believe Anna Nicole. The jury's verdict was she wasn't entitled to a dime. They understood this was really a son just trying to fulfill what his father wanted. In 2001, 12 of those jurors spoke to ABC News. My favorite moment was when Rusty Harden, he was just so frustrated with her, and finally he just sat back in his chair and he goes, Mrs. Marshall. What is that written across the top of your dress? Spoiled. Pass the witness. Pass the witness. I'm done. That's it. That's what she was. She was spoiled. And she knew it, and we knew it. Now, bizarrely, Anna is dead broke in Texas and a multimillionaire in California. You had two courts with very different views as to whether or not Anna Nicole Smith was entitled to a large chunk of money from her husband's estate. In fact, in the years ahead, the battle for Marshall's billions would take the former stripper all the way to the steps of the Supreme Court. Anna Nicole Smith gets to hear Justice David Souter and Ruth Bader Ginsburg talk about her situation, not always in language that she can perhaps appreciate or understand, but she's there, part of history, in this totally unexpected way. The land's highest court hands her a victory, yet the case is appealed again and again, and the grieving widow never collects a penny. 